Um, hey, cool, Mac. Let's see. Oh, good. It's coping with that. <laughs> Quality is going to be a little bit down, unfortunately. There's other activity going on the network, so. Uh, oh, well, doesn't matter. It'll, it'll be enough for the task at hand. Hey, Greg and Lisa. Lisa Forbes. Lisa, have I seen you on here before? I'm not sure. Maybe you have been. Starting to lose track of people, that's not good. All right. Hey, UK rules. I oh, know you've been here before. Oh. Well, as you uh, all know, I basically chucked a hissy fit the other night and realized that my uh, battery tester board was pretty much cactus, couldn't do much with it. And I've already started doing up the next one. But I thought, well, for the sake of trying to develop the firmware, I might see if I can hack job some semblance of a usable board out of this. It's going to be quite ugly, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Essentially, what I have to do is now I need my laser pointer in the form of a tweezer. Go to Annex. Uh, I've run out of IO pins on the 18 mega, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice the crystal because that gives me then two digital I.O. pins that I can use. Now I only need one digital I.O. pin and I'm going to use one to then take this 2K resistor over here and, uh, <coughs> pardon me, and put a MOSFET between that and ground. So the reason why I can sacrifice the uh, crystal is because it's not that essential to have a crystal locked uh, process going on here. It is nice if I want to get some real precision, particularly with the Coulomb counter, uh, you're sort of relying on the quality of the crystal, the, the timing, to make sure you get a good count of your milliamp hour consumption. Uh, it's not really that important for the serial communications, because with um, even with the internal RC clock on this, it's got about a 2% variance to what you ideally want with serial, but I find that almost every uh, device I've made without crystal clock works just fine at something like 9600 bit per second. So I'm not going to worry about that. So yeah, I'm making the decision to drop the crystal, gives me the two extra IO lines, and it's not that important. As long as we're within about 5% of our ideal values or five percent of our target we should be fine because remember we're just trying to compare what goes in versus what comes out we're not really concerned about the absolute value involved so let's see found a cracked version of pads pro 2.1 just installing it now Ooh, okay you didn't tell me that i don't know anything about that <laughs> The other good thing is I found one of my old boards. This is a about a, I think it was about a seven cell, six cell, seven cell Coulomb counting um, project I made. It used to have a little eight by two LCD panel, one of those glass ones that I've shown you before. It never made it outside of the prototype stage because I had some issues with the uh, data communications between the Coulomb counter and the AVR. But the nice thing is, it, looking at this, it has confirmed for me that that chip that I was wondering about the other night, which is this one, is in fact the same chip. So at least I know that I've got two of them. So if I blow one up, I've got the other one. So I'll put this one on our board, and if things go terribly wrong, I'll steal this one. You can tell this is meant for a high current application. You can see this whopping great big air cooled shunt here. Uh, I think I was rating this for about 50 amps or something like that. And as you can see, the cords are pretty... Th uh, the cords? My goodness. It's uh, just hit midnight here, so you'll have to excuse me as usual. The wires are fairly thick gauge. I'm not exactly sure what 
14 gauge wire there. So this is all for my model aircraft stuff. Um, we were <coughs> these were designed because prior to lithium batteries coming out, most people just use voltage uh, detection <coughs> on uh, battery packs to determine when they're going flat. But <coughs> with lithium packs, you because the discharge curve is very flat, you can't really depend on that. Particularly that under load, obviously the voltage sags relative to the internal resistance of the battery pack and whatever the resistance of your cables and connectors are. So you can't depend on it to know when you need to shut off or at least make an alarm or warning. So that's why we use the Coulomb counter or the milliamp hour counter. So you can say, okay, <clears throat> we've used up 80% of what we should have in the pack. Probably time to start landing the plane or the helicopter. Uh, I mean, to be fair, planes and helicopters always land. No matter what happens, they will land. The question is, will they land in one piece? So, anyway, so that's what that was all designed for originally. Use some crazy glue or JB World on that. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, all right, so what I'll do is, oh, I've got to get that charge chip too. I did find them, and they're on the other side, so I just have to go grab those. A long time ago, I was making single cell chargers off USB ports, and as a consequence, I kept a cluster of, and it was adjustable milliamp hour charge rate, a uh, milliamp charge out. So I kept cluster of uh, parts like this, which let me like set it up, and it was, I had a four-way switch on it, so you had uh, sixteen odd different variables. <clears throat> Sorry, 16 different settings. Anyway, that was for the microchip one, and I found that I actually also have my linear technology ones, the 4054, which is a better controller uh, charge chip. It can handle, I think, up to 800 milliamp. But I'm only going to run this at about 600 milliamp, so it does mean the battery will take a little bit longer to charge. But realistically, you can't do 800 on these on these boards because the poor little um, the charge chip it uses linear regulator in it so when it's dropping from 5 volt down to maybe 3 volt um, whatever, wherever it's trying to start from charging the heat's too much and it will just cook up that poor little chip so we limit it to 600 milliamp and it should do just fine I'm just setting up my fan. I'll be ordering my proper cooling uh, exhaust system soon. Okay, that's good. What are we going to put it on with? Mm, yeah, let's do hot air as well. Alright. We'll just put some solder down. And then hot air. Ah. Yeah, Cormac, with the pads thing, we're just using it so we can convert the PCB binary files into something that's usable by Open Board View. I think we've almost run out of my solder here. This is, uh, I've got about four turns left. And then I've got two spools, two 250 gram spools or one pound spools, whatever you want to call them. And this took me, this has taken me about 10 years to empty. So I, I don't think I've got any worries of running out. Okay, that's that. Fan, please. 
it'll be good when I've got the proper um, extraction system because the actual impeller and or the noise making section is going to be, I'm either going to have it up on the wall or I'm going to have it under the bench. I haven't decided yet. It will probably be on the wall because otherwise I've got to route the ducting over the bench. Uh, I guess we'll see, we'll see. Uh, probably got a bit too much solder on those pads. Probably have to wick them. Okay, that fan is not sucking enough. Let's knock it up another volt. There we go. Another volt. Uh, let's see. Where's my Lewis Rossman freshly squeezed? Although it's not so fresh anymore. This one's getting a little old. I'm going to have to order a new one soon. Okay, I'm only about a quarter of the way through it. But I imagine once I get my microscope and I start getting into my work, I'm going to go through it pretty quick. Okay. I have to say I am really enjoying this new vice. Definitely one of my better investments for a change in my life. Uh, let's get the hot air. Careful not to burn the... What? Did that even go down? Oh yeah, I'm going to assume it did. Is that slightly out of focus? Yeah, it is a little bit. Pads Free Reader opens the file and there is a one year free subscription for some pad software via DigiKey and I could not open the PCB at so, all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the Pro version, version certainly should. Yeah, now I've got to. I'm going to remember which way this thing goes. Ah, oh, right, let's pin one down there. Jason from SDS still uses captain tape to hold his iPhone boards in place on his bench. Yeah, um, he probably will get himself a decent vice soon. I think he's pretty busy just trying to get the rest of his equipment up to speed. Oh wow, that, that's stuck down because of the... Okay, let's get the hot air. Uh, UK rules, uh, my eyes are pretty knackered. Most of this is just um, by feel, to be honest. It really is by feel. Ah, crud. Yeah, you mucked it up now, Paul. Okay, 
Oh yeah, but is that still sold on there? No, it's just flux. Sometimes it can be hard to tell if the solder itself is liquid or whether it's just flux, but it's definitely flux. Yeah, look at that flux, flux drip there. Yeah. Jess, I was watching, should have a field day making terrible comments about that. Uh, C6. I have forgotten what my. <sighs> Great, and I tore up my schematics. Yeah, this is what's happened to all my board view and schematic printout. So now I've got to <laughs> now I've got to find it again. Here we go. And looks like I'm supposed to have a ten microfarad there. There we go. I could go print another one, but yeah. What's the point? Uh, it's a ten microfarad. Where are you? There we go. We've still got to hack the board to make it accept our new configuration. No. Oh, it's an 0805. That's right. It all comes back to me now. Where are you? One microfarad, one microfarad. It's flipping useless. Yeah, I'm going to put a 1206 on it. It's, I don't know, we've just got to the end of our spool. That's way too much solder. I'll have to do. I mean, you can put the 1206 on top of the 0805, that's not a huge problem, it's just that it's not correct to do so. I mean, the only way you're going to be able to do it is through hot air and nothing else. Oh, the, um, the flux is being surprisingly adhesive for some reason. I mean, I know it's always sticky, but it's exceptionally, exceptionally sticky tonight. Yep, you're good. Okay. And my shunt resistor. I can't even remember what value I picked for that. I'm not even sure why I would. What? What are you doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, I am using a. 100 milliohm, so 0.1 ohm shunt. And again, I pretty sure okay, that's no, no. Here we go, shunts. UK rules, yeah, I know what you mean about hitting 40. It. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, right there, right, well, I'm halfway through my 40s now. So, um, yeah, there's, you sort of can't see anything close than about, you know, that far from your face. 
I used to wonder why people would hold objects away from their face when trying to read them. Like, yeah, you'd see people doing um, this sort of thing. They'd be like, and I'd be like, what are you doing that for? If, yeah, if you can't, shouldn't you be getting closer? And then I've come to discover, of course, naturally, because the universe has a sense of humor, that, uh, yeah, your eyes just won't focus anymore that short. I know when I started to, I was probably about 33 when I lost the clarity in my vision and I did find that extremely distressing, uh, particularly, you know, you go downtown, man, there is no way I am going to, that's not even going to go close, oh, what am I going to do? There's no way a 2512 is going to fit on that. I'm going to have to go and see if I've got a 100 milliamp 1206. It's going to be an interesting find. Yeah, in your late 40s. <laughs> Great. Okay. Discovered a design layout issue with this board and is redesigning it. Oh, right. Thank you, Greg. Telling other people what's going on. Right. Right, I'm going to go grab my other box of resistors and see if I can find something. Let's see, 0603, 0603. I really have a bad feeling <laughs> about this. Are you? One ohm. Well, you're only about 10 times too high. Ten K, you're only about a hundred thousand times too high. There is no way I can make a one ohm resistor do the job there. I'm just going to have to scratch off or something like that, some of the track, to make that 2512 fit. I genuinely do not know what I was thinking when I did that. Um, I'll, I basically never do shunts that's uh, physically small, like 1206. So clearly I was smoking something, which is quite a feat given that I don't smoke. No. No, I definitely don't have any 1206 shunts. Alright, well, we're going to have to just scratch away. The first First thing I can try is I can line it up with this pad here and then float it over to this one here. I'll probably just reach. But I will have to wick away that yeah, they'll I'll get away with that. Fortunately there's nothing really attacking the conformal coating on the board, so I'm not too worried about it shorting out. And I shouldn't even really say shorting out. The worst thing that's going to happen is I'll just simply not get a reading on the shunt. Uh, yes, this is Chris Long Tech Spray Wick, no clean. Because I still hadn't made my order for my preferred wick, which is my Goot Wick. Because I'm from Team Goot. Ah, uh, but here's the next problem. These are my, um, 
these are my pads for connecting the battery to like the daughter boards. So I really don't want to obstruct those. Ah, damn it. I guess we'll scratch back to here. What a pain in the butt. On pot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could do a Lewis Rossman mod and solder the wires and the pads over the chip. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember him doing that with a um, backlight driver chip. And that didn't work out. It was a valiant effort, but it did not work out. Then I saw Chris Long did it with something else, and that did work out, so he got lucky. His, his was on an iPhone, I think. Yeah, I think we can... We can play loose and fast with this one and see how we go. It's certainly not going to be pretty. <sighs> it's going to be like me at the prom. Actually, we don't we don't have proms here in Australia as such. We, we do have a graduation night though at the end of the twelfth year of school, where we get to show up in ridiculous outfits and arrive in even more ridiculous vehicles. Uh, fun games. Okay, come on. Yeah, that will do. My wife is seven years younger than myself. Oh, excellent. Yeah, my wife is uh, about eight and a half younger than myself. Okay. What else do we need on here? I need to put the decoupling cap there for the power. Uh, uh. It's nothing overly exotic, it's just a little 100 nanofarad. All else fails, scrape the board, put the component. Yeah, well, that's what we do, yeah. Oh, where did that cap go? Come back here. Oh, great. Tombstone cap. Come on. The trouble is, I can't quite see what I'm doing. There we go. Come on. Hmm. Now comes the fun part. How do we go about doing this with the MOSFET? And we have to deal with this 2K resistor here, which is going straight to ground. Mm -hmm. Use strips of parcel label to cover the bare bits on the PC. Parcel label? Um, it, it, actually, no, let me see. 
is that any better for you, ZX? Maybe it is. Maybe it is my microphone input being a bit weak. I must admit, I am unsure as to where to adjust that. Think Tetris, yes, indeed. Stack them up. <laughs> Input. Input level. Okay, is that any better? I think I think that's better. That's that's pushing up a bit more now. Sorry. Use our, and it's also got ambient noise reduction. Oh, UV cure. Yeah, I need the UV cure. That was another thing that I wanted to order along with that standoff screwdriver. But uh, it didn't work out. It did not work out. I just realized I've got these resistors up here I need to add. They are for the contrast bias on the LCD. And so now I've got to go through all my little paper pieces. And it's... I know it's a 300 and a 10k, but I've forgotten which plumbing order it's in on this particular board. Ah, found it. Alright, so 330 actually. 330, 10k up the top, 330 at the bottom. Fair enough. Yeah, it, it was a little bit low, and as I said, the Mac seems to have this ambient noise reduction thing enabled in it, so I'd say it was probably picking up the fan and compensating against that a bit. Three hundred, three hundred. Right. Uh, what have I got here? 300, 330, 360. Uh, let's... 330. Now, because this one does not have... Uh, I don't have a backlight in my 16x2 um, LCD, there's no point me putting this resistor in here. That's just simply a, a current limiting resistor. Okay, it looks like I've got another... Where did it go? Where are you? There, this here, that's another 100 milli... Uh, 100 nanofarad. Obviously, we probably won't have this at all operating this evening, but at least we're going to... I'm hoping we just get that MOSFET set up. Come on. Stop being such a ground plane. Chris Long has his mic strapped to his microscope camera. It seems to work nice. Yeah, I've noticed that. Um, yeah, the one thing I have noticed with a lot of, I don't know whether it's uh, open broadcaster or just the systems, but have you noticed that if there's a loud noise, then the audio is attenuated for quite a few seconds afterwards. I particularly notice it with Jess's streams when she moves the microscope or something like that then all of a sudden the audio gets dropped right back and then slowly rises up. It's a bit frustrating because I lose hearing what she was saying. Oh well, what can you do? Hmm. Uh, 
All right, so we need one of these to the gate, one to ground, other to the resistor. So it was a bit of a silly mistake of mine to leave that off. No, oh, well. Well, I'm thinking I will tombstone the resistor here. I'll try and put the MOSFET over here. Mm. Choices, choices. If you're wondering what I mean when I say I'm going to tombstone a particular part, it just means that it's going to be upright. That's what. Under normal circumstances, circumstances, take your, take your pick. Uh, tombstoning is a rather notable pain in the ass. It usually happens when you're doing um, paste, pick and place, and then you put your board into the oven, and then it comes out, uh, because sometimes what will happen is the part won't sit on the paste properly. And then when the reflow occurs, the or maybe there's corrosion on the end cap of the part. Um, so when the solder reflows, it doesn't wick onto the part. But the surface tension of the other side is enough that it actually pulls the whole part upright. And then that's why you, you end up with these tombstones, which essentially means your board's dead sometimes. So, yeah, it's, a, it's a bit of a nuisance. It, it happens more often than I like, particularly with uh, do-it-yourself boards because a lot of the time our parts have been sitting around for quite a while and they've started just getting general oxidization on them and I've pulled out two 2Ks. Uh, you don't need that one. Get back in there. Friday beers. Oh, nice. Actually, no, not really. I'm not a beer person, but i got to say, uh, I look at beers and I sort of think, man, yeah, that, that looks kind of tasty or it could be interesting. But every time I taste a beer, I'm like, ah, oh, gross. Yeah, it's, uh, I've got to fight through it. I think there's only one beer I've um, ever really tolerated, or maybe two. Uh, the first one is Windhoek Lager, which any of you who live in South Africa will know. And the other one was uh, some Australian fancy pants. Oh crap, that was a resistor. Uh, oh, damn it. Can't even remember the name of the fancy pants beer in here in Australia. Needs to say, if you, if you have bought it and you were caught with it at a party, at a barbecue or something, you'd probably get... Uh, Escorted off the premises because of being too much for too much of a yeah pick your uh, bad word of choice. Can't be drinking that fancy pants skirt beer around here, boy. You have to, uh, it's not even Australian. That's flipping Texan or something. Right. I need a MOSFET. Uh, Now, because this is pretty much just a control line, there's not a lot of um, what do you call it? There's not a lot of current going through it. We can use a fairly standard, robust, boring MOSFET. In this case, a classical 2N7002. It has the upside if something goes terribly wrong. It just um, and it shorts or something like that. Its resistance inside is a couple of ohms, like four or five ohms, depending on which variant you get. So it won't really do any damage. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to just angle it on here like that. Oops. And so this pin here is the gate. This one here is the ground, or I really should say the source. And this one here is the drain side. And then we're going to run a wire from that over to Tombstone Valley. All right, that's the theory. <laughs> no one's perfect, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I'd probably actually, if I'd probably prefer something like a Guinness, to be honest. Uh, I just find the beers here, the ones they make, to be a little bit too watery. And it's like all they've decided to focus on is, let's be, let's be a bitter beer. And you know, I don't mind bitter, I mean, I like my coffee bitter, but it's got to have some wholesomeness behind it, yeah. You gotta feel like, oh yeah, you know, yeah. Anyway, I digress. Let's get on with the soldering here. Now, this thing is gonna to want to swing around when I hot air it, so I'm gonna to have to bring this down. I think it's Castlemaine like Castlemaine Lager or something like that. A real prissy beer, they call it. Yeah. Hot air, please. Hot air. Ugh. I'm going to drop that right down. 30% air. Looks like that took all right. It's good enough. Still got my tombstone there. Definitely not Foster's. Hell, you can't even get a Foster's in Australia. That's the crack up about it. <laughs> so people think we drink Foster's here. We don't. Because you can't even buy it. It all gets exported. Given a choice, I much prefer wine. But uh, I can't really drink. I just don't drink much or anything really anymore. Uh, but it's nothing ideological or anything like that. It's just a case of, for me, um, I hate getting the fuzzy head feeling, particularly when I want to do some work. And I'm like, oh man, I want to get some work done. And then you. Realize if you try to do anything, you're going to wake up the next morning and go, what the hell was I doing? Who let me onto this computer? Who let me near the source code while I was blottoed? Yeah. Drunk coding is not fun the next day. It's always fun during the night when you're doing it. The next day it's all regrets. Now, I'm not going to be able to do the much desired Lewis Rossman technique of um, yeah, I don't have a uh, I don't have a spool of soldable enamel wire that's fine enough for this sort of thing. Uh, it's one of those things I've got to put on my list. The list, so many things on the list. Okay, so this will just be a hack job that we will not tell anybody about. After you put those vertical parts on, cover hot glue, yeah. <laughs> uh, do love hot glue. Yeah, I never used it. In fact, I used to wage a holy campaign against hot glue, and then I became a convert. I'm not sure if I'm ashamed of that or not. Anyway, ZX, you should be happy. You're the one telling me I need to... What? Didn't I cut that cable? I think I picked up the wrong piece. 
Yeah, I picked up the wrong piece. Oh well. No biggie. Anyway, as I was saying, you should be happy because here I am doing what you said I should do. Oh man, this stuff is stickier than... I don't know what. It's just sticky ass. I'm gonna have to cut that. You should probably cut it about cut it about a bee's dick too short. <sighs> oh crap! I just realised um, my neighbour from the road's watching, and I shouldn't be swearing. Hopefully, he's busy playing games on his impressive new computer case with RGB, fan LEDs, all sorts of things. Okay, let's use the back end of the tweezers. So, we are done. <sighs> Must be really bad if Aussies don't drink it. <laughs> uh, the, there's certain um, opinions on what it really is, but yeah, I'm just I've got a ground pad there that I'm not happy with on that. Here, that doesn't look. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I gotta say I'm not overly confident about the hot air job on. Damn it, the solder is. Oh, that's my hot air automatically shutting down. Okay, that spool, congratulations for those watching. Ah, that spool was thrown away after whatever it was, 10, 12 years. So you got to see the end of the spool. Now I've got to go get a new one. Just blame the confusion between metric and imperial B. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Silent movie. Cue the piano music. Yeah. Uh, the black and white look and me crashing over everything. Yo, it's a disgusting looking tip.
I think I might have a bridge there. Just a slight bridge. Right there. <laughs> but it's only one bridge covering all the pins. Let's wick that away. So this is where Chris's wick is good uh, for small wick jobs like that. Whereas certain for the large type absorption situations, I do prefer for heavy flow absorption situations. I do prefer the goot. That ground pin isn't quite sitting in right. Now it is. Oh. Uh, let's see. So now I need pin headers. Mm -hmm. Just trying to think. Yeah, let's get some pin headers. <sighs> What's the general opinion about chopper reed in Australia? Well, Bobby, that depends on which portion of Australia you're looking at. Uh, uh, he's sort of in with the Ned Kelly type uh, thing where he's uh, a bit of a anti-hero type thing. I'd say most people didn't really care too much until uh, the movie was made and then the usual scenario where you get all the people saying, oh yeah, I've always been a fan of Chopper Reed. We have a comedy a comedy show where Chopper Reed, is, there's a parody of him, well, I don't know if it's a parody, but, uh, but it's done by, uh, oh man. Who's the dude that did the really bad Hulk? He's an Australian. Anyway, if you search Google, uh, YouTube for comedy Chopper Reed, you'll see plenty of skits with him. Obviously not. Holy crap. Sorry. Excuse my language. I'm just looking at all these other little crazy things I've got under here that I need to sort out. Do I need to sort you guys out? Uh, not really at this point. I've, I've got two resistors here that need to be put in. They deal with the uh, gas gauge and NTC communication from the battery. But for this purpose, for this particular board, I'm not going to bother getting into that. I'll save that for when I have the legitimate board. Mm. Ronnie Johns, no. Uh, uh, he's a famous actor. I can't even remember his name. Uh, he was in Troy. Uh, he was um, Hector. Oh, I'm going to go get my pinheaders and I'll leave you guys to try and remember his name. I'll remember it by the time I come back. Hey, fixing things. I'm surprised you're on here. I thought you'd be busy putting drill marks all over your new microscope. Uh, I can't believe it. I'm almost out of... That would be uncalled for. I'm almost out of uh, normal single row pin headers like that. 
So I got my support, 500 of these rows, like 40 wide, 500 of them. I can't believe I'm actually getting to the end of it. Uh. Eric Banner, thank you. Yeah, Eric Banner. The only thing is, my memory is playing tricks on me. Did Eric Banner do the fast forward comedy version of Chopper Reed, or was it only the actual movie version? Bum, 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 ba, I might do these right angle ones, but then I probably don't know where my right angle ones are. Ah, there they are. I'm just looking at how pretty it is, and I have to move my room again. Yeah, but at least you know you got something pretty. So when you got something pretty in your life, it makes it, or you try and do it for something pretty, it just makes life so much easier. Uh, this, the weight of the burden is so much less. Ah. It's like when you're in love and they say, can you help me move my house? And you're like, sure thing, baby. And you spend the whole weekend moving house and you put, do it with a big fat smile because you're thinking, yeah, I'm getting popular with this person and maybe I will get lucky. I do not recommend that strategy. It's a bad strategy. The best strategy is to find the ones that will move house for you. Just kidding, I'm giving out deliberately bad advice here. Do not ever listen to me when it comes to relationship advice because I will be deliberately trolling you. Because I do not believe in such things. Advice on relationships. I think each and every single one of them is unique. Oh wait, look, there I'm giving out advice. Bad me, I'll just shut up now and stick to it. Stick to other things that I'm not good at, like electronics. Come on, rick through. Very good. <laughs> Right, it was Ronnie Johns on YouTube doing the parodies. Thank you very much, Bobby Gordon. I apologize for my misunderstanding there. I appreciate that you clarified. Another thing in my brain to forget tomorrow. Well, the upside of having all the uh, flux on here that's all very sticky is that it lets me hold those pin headers in without, <laughs> without having to do a damn thing. It just sits in there. Nice. Very nice. And extra bonus, the vice holds it perfectly good. I just realized you can't see squat. There we go. Yeah, but I remember the Ronnie Johns one. Hello, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Crack up. Oops. I think Chopper Reed saw them and thought they were pretty funny. I guess you really wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to upset the guy one way or another. Alright. Are we done? Alright. We even got our little tombstone there in the graveyard. The graveyard of First prototype hopes. Yeah. Well, I already knew that was a commitment to death anyway. 
Uh, what else have I got? I don't know why I bothered putting that on there. I'm not going to use it. I suppose I should put a one battery connector on there. I'll see if I've got a 4 or 4S one floating around. Can you quickly tell me where the open board view software saves all the preferences on a Mac? Ah, can't change zoom steps and it's set to zero. Oh, okay, that's really weird. Um, that is a really good question. I'm genuinely not exactly sure, but if you search for obv.conf, you should be able to find it. I would have thought it'd be in the folder that um, that it's launched in. If you're having troubles, whatever, just hit the um, five key the, on the num. Oh, it depends if your Mac's got a numpad or not. Um, that will bring the board back into direct view. I'll have to have a look. I'm sorry, I haven't done much of the Mac version, but now that I've got this MacBook Pro here, I can do more work on the Mac version of Open Board View, you know, resolve some of the Mac related issues. Alright, uh, what am I doing? Uh, oh, that's right, I was trying to find some battery connectors. Okay, be right back. Well, I've got my box of phone parts. Let's hope I've got something useful here. Most of these are USB sockets for um, Samsung Galaxies. Sad, sad little things. No, no seriously, I don't. What? I know I have bought um, sockets for. This, but it seems I cannot find them. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, I guess I'll just order some more. I mean, I can do without it in the meantime. I don't know, that kind of feels like I've been cheated. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Let's see. Definitely feel cheated. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. Oh, Pernov. Pernov, the creator of the open board view. Uh, autocorrect that Lewis loves. And many of the file format inputs. File format inputs. And the one that constantly beats me over the head for doing too much C in the C++ code. <laughs> I can't help it, Pernov. I mean, come on, 25 years of writing C code, what do you expect? Uh, 
you asked you asked. Ah, thank you, Pernod, for answering that question too. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, now that I've got a MacBook Pro, I need to put effort into resolving any of these minor niggles that we have with the Mac version and the uh, custom key controls thing. It's just a case of getting momentum, getting back into it, I suppose. But I think we're both kind of busy with our own stuff at the moment. I have no idea what the polarity orientation of this is. I can guess that's this. Oh, we're either going to go pop bang or nothing. Hopefully it's nothing. Um, what should happen is we may see the uh, individual character matrices uh, sort of change their contrast a little bit and that's about it. That's the theory. Let's see what happens in reality. And we're at 11.2 volts, so I'm just going to drop that down to 8.2 and I'm going to set the current way down to 100 milliamp. That should be good. Oh, oh well, the, uh, now the question is, is that repeatable? YouTube stream keeps crapping out on me. Uh, Station 240, I'm looking at the stats and I'm showing 0.2% of uh, drop frames, so yeah, it shouldn't be. Oh, well, that looks promising, and I'm only drawing seven milliamp, which is about right because that's the that's just being used up in the um, linear regulator. Uh, and all the other little minor things that I've got going on there. All right, so at least we know we haven't explicitly blown anything up that we are aware of. Yeah, ZX, it's, um, yeah, it's definitely a long, slow, painful process with a lot of these boards. I said, I mean, even the simplest of things I've shown before, like the, pardon me, the 5 volt regulator with the alarm built in. I mean, there's about 20 odd versions of that, and all it was was just a simple linear 5 volt regulator. Yet somehow or another, I end up 20 different versions before I finally came down to one that lasted more than a year without being changed. I mean, yeah, some of the changes were driven by better parts being available, particularly when I changed from using the AT13s, AT Tiny 13 to the AT Tiny 10, that uh, resulted in a significant sort of rewiring. So, uh, what I'm going to do probably tomorrow, and I'm sorry, this will probably be happening off stream, is I will set up the basic firmware just to get the ugliest side of things done, such as communication with the LCD, just making sure all the pins are lined, uh, all the connections are operating as I would expect. And then I can work on the more interesting details, like actually working out what to do with the whole charge, discharge, testing, and things like that. Would be the server or my ancient ADSL connection. I'll get a rave TCA. I haven't seen for you for a while, about a week. <laughs> I suppose that's a while. Um, Station 240, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, if you've got. If you've got anything like 2 megabit per second, you should be fine. I mean, I'm only uploading at 2.83 here. And actually, that's the next question. Is this 1080 or is this uh, 720? I've forgotten what I set it to. Uh, 
And it looks like I've created yet another colossal mess everywhere. So I suppose I should try clean up before the end of the day. Being one o'clock in the morning. It's uh, fun. I didn't really have a lot of jobs today other than the one that was this morning when you saw me fixing up the pair of iPhone 4s. Uh, what else do I have? Um, I've got a um, Toshiba, I think it's an L500 or an A500 that I'm just cleaning up. It's been sitting in storage for a few, few years. Uh, fortunately, it's all running fine. It just needs to be updated with about 600 megabytes of Windows updates. That's pretty normal. i got to say, that is the nice thing about now having the very uh, the 25 megabit connection is that the downloads really don't take up much. I know I could have a mirroring um, Microsoft update server here, but to be honest, I just don't care to do that because the updates come down quick enough and there's always new ones to come down anyway. Uh, and it's another machine that I have to tie up. I really prefer not to. So for me, it's only a couple of times a week that I have a machine that will do this. So I just let it run. It never, it doesn't worry me. You have 1080 as an option. Okay, that's good. 8.3, but it's Tesla's copper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly with eight, you should be fine. But I know, I know sometimes here, uh, with our Netflix, we can be uh, have nothing else on, and the Netflix comes up all pixelated and whatnot, and you're like, you know, that's a bit weird, considering Netflix only needs about five. But it feels random, talking to yourself and getting no audio response. The wife probably thinks you're crazy, right? Yeah, <laughs> i got to admit, it, it is initially very difficult. Well, for me, it was very difficult to talk on live stream like this because, yes, as you say, there's no audio feedback. Particularly, to when I was used to or used so much to being on the other side, like the side that you guys are all on, uh, particularly like with the Lewis Rossman streams and things like that. So then to get on this side of the camera, it felt very foreign because I felt like I wanted to type out what I wanted to say, which... Uh, yeah, obviously I don't do. The harder one though is doing the edited videos where you have no audience and it's just the camera and then you go on and edit it later. It feels very strange. You have no feedback, even though the feedback here is delayed by about 30 seconds or so. At least it's something. Uh, I lose track of myself so many times when trying to do edited videos. I do need to do a few more of them because I've got to do the DD Rescue tutorials or guides, things like that. So, uh, UK rules. What version of Windows? Uh, the laptop at the moment is very, it's Windows 7. It's 32-bit, which is a little unusual. Normally, it's normally all the ones I deal with now are 64-bit. Some of my horrible PCBs would make you vomit, but they work. Thrown in a box, they work perfectly. Yeah, when you can't see in the box, it doesn't matter. I've got some bad hack jobs around here, but I've got to admit, after I've done the hack job, I do generally spin a new prototype board, or a new board, and then make it look all pretty. So, I mean, yeah, I, I like my final products to look sort of like this, or a bit better. Yeah. Oh, this is the one that didn't even work. That was a crack up. Uh, I forgot to route one, the feedback line on this one. It still worked by pure luck. And I sold, probably sold about 100 of them. But in the end, I did the proper version and I shipped out replacement boards to most people. Oh, Max, you should have sent me that file, and then I would have been able to have a look and see what was wrong. I, it'd, be un, it'd be weird to see what went wrong there, because, yeah, I mean, it is a text file, and so there is the occasional situation where maybe it doesn't get flushed to the disk before something happens. Um, I haven't seen any corrupted ones yet, so if anyone does get a corrupted open board view file, certainly feel free to send it across. <sighs> 
downloaded all the Windows 7 updates and integrated them into the install DVD. Oh, okay. I mean, that's fine if you're doing the install. What I've done is I've just got the usual Windows slow update fixes and then the consolidated update uh, or the roll up, whatever you want to call it. So that brings me forward and saves about seven, eight hundred megabytes of download. And then once that's there, of course, there's always the little bits and pieces that it picks up. Rick Fundermark. Uh, I can understand. Recently started posting to YouTube. No live streams yet. And it's weird just talking to the camera. Just going for it, though. Oh, thank you, Rick. Yeah, I think you just have to do it. Uh, when I look back on my first couple of videos, I think I'm up to 145, 146 now. And I just sort of think, oh, my goodness. Yeah. But the thing is, like Lewis Rossman says, you know, the best way to get started is to just start. And accept that your first few are going to be trashy. And if you do them really regularly, then they're going to be even more trashy. For, I don't think you can seem to accelerate that uh, improvement process by doing more quicker. I think it's just a case of within limits. Um, over time, you develop the technique and maybe the confidence or something to talk better at it. One thing I would really like to change is this headset, but that's on the list. That will be done after everything else is updated. Make the product work first. Pretty PCBs can come later. Absolutely. Is it possible to go to Melbourne? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, one thing, uh, this is sort of getting more on my personal side here, but I am very much a hermit type creature. I don't like leaving the house much. Uh, I do enjoy going to Townsville, but I don't do visits. Um, like with Lewis, I don't do visits. Uh, Drop-ins are a nightmare. It's just, I prefer to reach out through the internet, but in real life, it's a nightmare. I, I really hate it because my hearing issues and the fact that when you get into these human-to-human -human situations, there's certain social obligations, um, yeah, just certain, what's the word I'm after? traditions, so to speak, that you go through, and I honestly, I'm so flat out for time most of the time these days, and I barely get to spend time with my wife, that really I just, you know, if I'm going to have spare time and I'm going to go into another town, I'll be taking me and the wife down to the beach down in Townsville and just enjoying the outdoors a bit, but other than that, no, I mean, uh, Family visits are a nightmare for me. I mean, the family's perfectly good, but it just stresses me out like anything. Uh, and then, of course, I've got the fur kids, and they are really my kids, like with all the fencing set up and everything like that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, when I was younger, when I was in my 20s, I was traveling everywhere. I was on a plane every couple of weeks. I was, I was taking every trip I could, but since I've come back to Australia and sort of settled into my business and work, I'm really not a traveling person anymore. Do you remember the first thing you ever sold it? Um, let me think. I actually do, but it wasn't really a thing per se. Um, I was trying to solder. I had a soldering iron, just one of those straight into the power type soldering irons. Um, I'm just going to change this, sorry, just drag this across a bit. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Um, and I had a couple of leaded components or something like that. And I didn't have a circuit board. So, and I think I was about 9 or 10 at this point. So I pushed the leads through a piece of cardboard and was trying to solder them together like that. And I managed to finally get a connection between two old components. And I think they must have been corroded or something like that because the solder really wasn't taking to them. And I managed to make that one connection. And I was like, hey, I made a connection. I ran off to my mother and I was like, look, I soldered, I soldered. And she's like, oh, that's nice, that's nice. And I'm like, damn it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's not much fun when your enthusiasm is not reciprocated by those that you take it to to show off. 
uh, that's a problem that everybody probably endures. It's that leads me into another thing where I am a very when it comes to doing my projects or anything like that, I tend not to tell anybody anything around me, um, like as in the people in real life here with me, as opposed to on the internet or email or things like that, where I just tell everybody everything. In fact, I'm far too much of a blabbermouth when it comes to the virtual world. But in the real world, I just tend not to say anything. I don't like people even asking me about what I'm doing. As a kid at uh, school, I remember in grade two, we were doing a uh, spelling test or something like that. That was a math test. And the teacher would come around to check that what we were doing. And I would like straight away, I'd be like, no, you can't see my answers. And it's like, yeah, it's just been, I'm always like that. And it was a bit ridiculous because the teacher's going to look at your answers once you hand the paper in. But while I'm working on something, I don't like people looking at it who don't understand the process. Uh, I suppose you could say I don't really take kindly to uh, people's opinions on things until I've got a finished product. Because I think there's so many different ways that you go about getting to your finished product. And there is so much context involved in the way you choose to do something that when other people come along and they look at it for that moment, they make they have their own assumptions about what context you're working in. And 99% of the time it's wrong. So then they will then deliver a critique to you and you have to either just accept that critique and sort of like, yeah, yeah, grit your teeth, or you have to try and then fill them in with all the details behind it, the reasoning behind everything, and you're just wasting your time. And when you get to the end of your definition of what your context is, they probably still will find something to pick on. So for me, it's a great big fat waste of time. I would rather people judge things by my end result. Got my daughter soldering at five. Wow, that's that's pretty young, yeah. She's gotten good. She loves building stuff with me. Oh, that's good. Yeah. ZX. I do understand the hearing problem. I have one faulty ear and loud tinnitus. Yeah, the tinnitus is just maddening all the time. I'm a human tuning fork. It also gets louder with other people speaking. Okay, that's interesting. I haven't, I haven't had that situation where it gets louder when other people speak. Uh, for me, the ambient exterior noise will tend to drown it out usually. Uh, if I start getting anxious, which happens pretty easily, then yeah, the tinnitus uh, volume will tend to pick up quite badly. Uh, I was alright until around about my mid-30s and then for some reason, I'm guessing stress, the tinnitus levels just picked up quite badly and uh, it's well, as you probably know. If you're not thinking about it and you're being distracted, usually you don't notice it. But then, as soon as you get a quiet moment, you start thinking, or you even try to internally listen in on the tinnitus, and yeah, it just becomes ridiculously loud, and you start going a bit insane. My doctor is visiting Australia, and I have something. Yeah, uh, I mean, Melbourne is Melbourne is uh, three thousand kilometers away from here. It is at least two trips, two plane trips, and that would be probably around about five hundred dollar return trip. And I have to drive an hour and a half each way from the airport, uh, which is about one hundred and fifty kilometer trip. Each way. So yeah, I I do not go anywhere. Um, I used to love flying. I really did. I wanted to be a pilot and everything. But I had a bad experience when I was over in South Africa. And it was just one of those moments in life where you go from loving something to absolutely dreading it. It's worse than it's worse when you're trying to sleep. Yep. Oh, is that what you're trying to say, UK rules? Like when you're trying to get asleep and the tinnitus just sort of like seems to get louder and louder and louder. Yep. What I really hate is when you get those piercing moments, you know, you're just doing your own thing, 
and then all of a sudden you lose your hearing completely, you become profoundly deaf, like deaf, and then all of a sudden you go, me, and it just like a single tone going straight through your head, and it lasts like 30 seconds or something like that, and you can't hear a damn thing while that happens. That is just so annoying. I'm not sure why that happens. I've heard theories that it's when a nerve dies, and that um, is it. Yeah, okay, trying to sleep. I think a lot of people like things like having air conditioners or fans going just to give that white noise effect. Yeah, most of the time you can mentally mask out the tinnitus. Yeah. Or if you have a suitable selection of music, you find you can sort of silence it out. I find usually um, higher pitched music tends to work well for me. Female singers, things like that. And generally... I prefer them not to be English, like uh, I enjoy Celtic or, um, oh, yeah, singers like Enya, Lorena McCannett, um, classical music for certain, all that sort of stuff, yeah, I like, if I lock in on the words on a song, I find it very hard to sort of disconnect from it, it becomes a distraction, not a, um, uh, it, it doesn't help, put it that way. Sounds like a nightmare of things in my head. You sound like you monitor my... <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's just something that people with hearing loss issues all have to deal with in varying degrees. You know, some days I'm perfectly good. I'm, I don't, don't even notice it. But then, yeah, other days it becomes quite difficult to cut through it. So no Tori Amos. <laughs> okay, that's a reference to Lewis Rossman. I haven't listened to any Tori Amos, to be honest. Or maybe I have, but I'm not aware of it. John, how's it going? John. Here we go, John. There we are. Been using the board. Thank you very much. Uh, for everyone wondering, it was John's video on his channel that led me to buying this um, vice. And it's definitely one of the best vices I've ever had for circuit boards. So thank you very much, John. Let's see. Uh, so what's the time now, anyway? It's 1.30 in the morning. I'm kind of half decided if I should go watch a movie. I, I do like to finish off the day with a break, like watching a simple movie. Um, some act, action movie or something like that. Just something to disconnect. Though last night, I watched uh, Silence of the Lambs, and I'll, I've known of, and I've seen snippets of, and I've seen the other two movies of Silence of the Lambs, but I've never seen the original Jodie Foster John, um, damn it, what his name anyway, um, Hopkins, Anthony Hopkins, sorry. I've never actually seen that one end to end completely, so... It came up on Netflix last night, so I thought I'd watch it. No, it, was, you know, it wasn't too bad. The um, cinema um, cinematography style was quite different. Talking about tinnitus makes my tinnitus get louder. Yes, it certainly, it certainly does. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure which I'm gonna, what I'm going to watch tonight. I was hoping that maybe uh, Doctor Strange would be on, because I see that is available in the US, but it doesn't appear to be here in Australia at this point. 4.30 in the afternoon in UK now. Huh. Yeah, actually that would be about right. Uh, I have, let's see, Bobby Gordon and I have tinnitus from playing in live bands for years and doing studio work. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, Work-related hearing loss, not good. Watch a comedy, otherwise you'll have bad dreams. I don't know, watching comedies give me bad dreams sometimes, usually because 90% of the time comedies don't seem to be comedies. They're just, and yeah, they're not even funny. Uh, I did watch Hot Chick again the other night. That is a movie that seems to be standing the test of time. Just cracks me up watching that each time. John Wick, I really like that movie. I didn't know what to expect when I hired that. And I got to say, I preferred it, uh, Keanu Reeves in it, over even his uh, Matrix versions. To be fair, I mean, the first Matrix was mind-blowing, particularly the first time you see it. I mean, we all experienced, well, most of us experienced that. But um, the 
subsequent two apparent Matrix movies were just a disaster. So it was good to see Keanu Reeves come out with John Wick, and I'm very excited to see what John Wick 2 is going to be like. Hopefully they haven't uh, ruined that franchise. I'm curious to see what the new Spider-Man is going to be like, the uh, Homecoming one. Uh, I won't see it until it's out on Netflix, but uh, I have a personal interest in the new Spider-Man because I know someone who is involved uh, quite a bit with the work of Spider-Man. So it was nice to see that particular person after over a decade of hard work finally get into the position where they were involved with that. So. All right, okay, well, I'm, I'm waffling on. What I'm going to do is, to, like I said, tomorrow during the day, I will work on this and see if I can get something operational. I'll see if I can find those iPhone battery sockets as well. I know I don't have any of the 5, 5S or anything like that. I do have the 4 and 4S. I'm absolutely sure of that. Worst case scenario, I will just take it from some donor boards that I have lying around just so we can have a bit of a play around with it. I need to order the daughter boards that I am planning to plug into this 4-pin header here. Now, the nice thing about going the daughter board route is that it will let me and everyone else actually do this sort of thing without requiring this particular board. Uh, because if you just buy one of the $30 uh, cycling testing battery chargers for model aircraft people use then you'll be able to do the same thing you'll just need to hook up to the uh, daughter boards and away you go so. okay pity welcome early morning for you hope you didn't suffer too bad this morning Cody your popcorn I'm not sure uh, I saw the first one of the Saints movie it was awesome. Went down here from there. I've actually got to see that one too. Yeah, I watched uh, Train Spotting again for the first time. Like I watched it originally when it came out in the theaters, and then I just watched it last week or something like that. Could not believe how young the people were, like um, Ewan McGregor and all the others in there. I was like, "Whoa!" Have Mr. Gold from oh, what was it? Uh, that TV series, Once Upon a Time, I think it was. Yeah. Anyway, it was just crazy to see that. Anyway, all right, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for coming in and popping around and listening to me yabble on while we do a tremendous hack job with this board. ZX, I hope you're happy with the fact that I did that. I know you are, but yeah. And um, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow and we'll actually be able to put this into play. So... Good luck to me. Good luck to everyone else. Hope you hope you all have some uh, fun today, fixing things, whatever. Friday, I imagine, it is for most of you. UK people, you are now just sitting starting on your weekend. For the US people, you're almost there. Another eight hours and you'll be home. So, oh, the toilet thing. Oh, my God. Yeah, that just that was just terrible. Yeah, well, thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> okay, on that note, I'm out of here. Take care. I'll see you all later.